Language support, ecosystem, flexibility, learning curve, and extensibility. These are the categories that we're going to be using to compare two of the most popular infrastructure as code frameworks that are available today. That's Terraform and the AWS CDK or Cloud Development Kit. Now there's a lot of things that these two frameworks do differently, but ultimately they are both frameworks that have the same end goal to help you easily manage lots of complicated infrastructure via code. Code that can be checked into version control, it can be reviewed, and it can be deployed to multiple environments in the cloud. So before we compare these two, let me just give you a bit of background on each of these two frameworks. I'm gonna start with Terraform. Terraform was created in 2014 by HashiCorp, more on them later, and it was a tool that really revolutionized the way that we manage infrastructure. Around 2014, the entire tech industry was going through this mass migration from on-premise software into the cloud. And managing cloud infrastructure before Terraform was pretty messy. Every cloud provider had their own set of tools, so AWS had CloudFormation, which worked fine if you only use AWS, but if your team was juggling multiple clouds or you wanted to integrate other systems, then it got really complicated really quickly. And here's where Terraform became so popular so quickly. It was designed from the ground up to work with any cloud Cloud provider. So AWS, Google Cloud, Azure, and even smaller providers like DigitalOcean. And it wasn't just for servers as well. Terraform can be used to manage databases, DNS entries, load balancers, SaaS tools, pretty much everything with an API would eventually have some kind of Terraform provider built for it. Terraform also introduced some really innovative ideas. So things like state management. Terraform keeps a record of what your infrastructure looks like. So when you make changes, it doesn't just blindly apply those changes, it checks the current state and it calculates the differences. So that means that you generally make fewer mistakes and you have a lot more control over what you're actually deploying. It has this um, plan apply workflow. So before Terraform does anything, it generates a plan and that plan tells you exactly what it's going to do and what it's gonna be creating and deleting and modifying and that sort of thing. And only when you approve the plan, does it make those changes. So this is one of the most useful features of Terraform because it gives you that predictability and it prevents you accidentally making destructive changes to your cloud resources. So if you can see that plan ahead of time, then you can review it and you can incorporate your team with that as well. Terraform grew really quickly. By 2015, it was already gaining traction in the DevOps community. And over the years, HashiCorp kept improving it up until last year, that is, when they decided to change the licensing model. HashiCorp essentially changed Terraform from being completely open source to using the BSL, Business Source License. And that annoyed a whole load of people. An open source fork called OpenTF sprung up. And there's a whole bunch of drama around this change, which I covered at the time in a video, which I'm gonna put up here. But the end result of all of this is that developers started to look seriously for alternatives to Terraform. And so that brings us on to the second framework that we're going to be comparing today. That's the AWS Cloud Development Kit, or the CDK. This one kind of goes against everything Terraform stood for, right? In that it's not multi-cloud, this is a tool just for AWS. But if you can stomach that, then the AWS CDK is actually extremely cool and it's a rapidly growing popularity amongst DevOps teams that are using AWS. So where did the CDK come from? Well, the AWS CDK is much, much more recent. It was originally launched only in 2019, um, and so five years after Terraform, basically. And it's a tool that AWS uses for managing infrastructure on AWS only. AWS already had loads of tools like CloudFormation, which, let's be honest, is great, but it is kind of painful to use. So YAML files with hundreds and hundreds of lines, loads of tricky syntax, and a general feeling of like, this could break any minute. The CDK is much, much easier to use, and it's a wrapper and abstraction on top of CloudFormation. But the CDK isn't just another infrastructure as code tool, it's actually a complete reimagining of how we think about defining infrastructure. Instead of writing long, clunky YAML or JSON templates, the CDK lets you use actual programming languages. So TypeScript, Python, Java, C Sharp, you can use all these things to write your infrastructure the same way that you'd write application code. So think about that for a second. With the CDK, you're writing code, real, reusable, testable code to define your infrastructure. So if you wanted to spin up an S3 bucket, instead of defining a YAML file, you just write a few lines of TypeScript, which is a language that you're probably already using. So why is this such a big deal? Well, that means that you can take advantage of everything that a programming language offers. So you can do things like loops and conditionals and functions and modules. You can break your infrastructure into neat reusable components. So if let's say you need 10 identical Lambda functions, you can write a loop. If you wanted to do different configurations for dev and prod, then you can use an if statement. So it's just like any other programming situation basically, except this time you're creating infrastructure. 
When you run the CDK, it translates all of your code and runs it and creates CloudFormation templates under the hood. So it then deploys the CloudFormation templates to AWS in much the same way that Terraform does, but of course it isn't cloud agnostic. So that's Terraform and the AWS CDK, but which one is right for you? Well, let's put these categories back on the screen and start comparing them in some kind of structured way. First up, we're going to look at language support. So the AWS CDK is designed for developers, software developers. It lets you define uh, your infrastructure using popular programming languages, like I mentioned, so TypeScript, Python, Java, C Sharp, I think even Go as well. And that means that if you already are comfortable writing software in these languages, then you'll be able to use a CDK. You can use loops and conditionals and all the tools that you're already using in your daily coding. So essentially, you're writing infrastructure as if it was any other part of your application. Terraform, on the other hand, uses another language called HCL, which stands for HashiCorp Configuration Language. HCL is a declarative language, which means you describe the desired state of your infrastructure, so it's not um, like procedural, like one of the programming languages we mentioned before, and then Terraform figures out how to make that happen. It's a clean and straightforward language, um, and it's even usable by people who aren't necessarily software developers. So the simplicity of Terraform is a massive advantage for teams that use system administrators or DevOps engineers who don't want or need to do actual programming languages. With Terraform, you don't have to worry about handling loops and conditionals and debugging. The focus is really on what the infrastructure should look like and then how to build it step by step. So which of these two wins? Well, it's pretty obvious to be honest, and I have to give this first category to the AWS CDK, because nobody wants to put HashiCore configuration language on their recipe, literally nobody. But the next category will be a little bit more fair. The next category I've called ecosystem. So the first category might have been a home run for the CDK, but this next one is coming pretty tough to argue against Terraform. The ecosystem that's built up around Terraform over the years is absolutely huge. So firstly, Terraform isn't tied to a single cloud provider. It's multi-cloud by design. That means you can use Terraform to manage AWS and Azure and Google Cloud, but it also goes further than that. Terraform can handle non-cloud services. So if you wanted to manage DNS records with Cloudflare, you can do that in Terraform. If you wanted to set up resources in Kubernetes, that's really easy in Terraform as well. Even things like creating products in a Stripe dashboard or managing GitHub repositories, you can do all those things with Terraform. So that flexibility makes it ideal for hybrid environments or teams that are mixing uh, like cloud services with SaaS providers. Um, Terraform can be used there as well. And then there's a community part of the ecosystem too, which I'm bundling into the same category. AWS CDK does have a growing community, especially amongst AWS developers. The CDK Construct Hub is a really great resource that's full of like reusable components and common patterns that you can use. But because the CDK is so AWS focused, the community is naturally a lot smaller and a lot more specialized. Terraform, on the other hand, has a massive mature community that's been around for a very long time. The Terraform registry is packed with modules and providers for just about any use case you can imagine. Plus, with so many contributors, you're more likely to find something that's been pre-built um, in an open source community. So honestly, this is a bit of a no-brainer. Terraform is a clear winner when it comes to ecosystem. It has a much ecosystem, uh, stronger ecosystem pretty much all around. All right, now let's look at the third category, flexibility. Now, this is an interesting one because these two frameworks are flexible, but in different ways. So on the one hand, the AWS CDK, that lets you write code, any code you like, to do pretty much anything you want to do. So if you wanted to go off and pull data from a database and use that to define how your cloud services are created, you can do that, just like in any other application. So you might say that makes it more flexible. But Terraform has that one huge advantage, which is that it is multi-cloud or it's cloud agnostic. And honestly, for some people, this is the only thing that matters to them. With Terraform, you can define your services on a template and then deploy them, not just to AWS, but also to Azure and to Google um, and quite a lot of other cloud providers. I think even like Oracle cloud infrastructure is supported. Did you even know that Oracle has cloud services? I didn't, but there you go. So how do we pick a winner? Well, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and show some of my personal bias. This is a very controversial statement and feel free to shout at me in the comments section below, but here it goes, right? Being cloud agnostic is actually not that much of a benefit, especially to smaller companies. Vendor lock-in with your cloud provider is just a part of life these days, right? Um, I know that's a strong statement and I know the development community hates the idea of vendor lock-in, but look, we're in 2025 now, right? Everything is a service these days. You most likely have all of your emails in one particular cloud email 
mobile provider. You have all of your employee user credentials set up somewhere. You probably have your database and some kind of provider database service. Maybe all of your analytics are stored in Google Analytics or something like that. And all of these are vendor locked in. You can't just move all of your web analytics from Google to Plausible very easily. That would be a nightmare. And organizations are generally fine with that kind of vendor lock-in. We just accept that all of our emails are stored in Outlook and moving the entire organization to Gmail would be a massive pain in the backside. So in my opinion, which you're welcome to disagree with, is that your cloud infrastructure, the thing that's actually making your business money, isn't actually that much different to where your emails are stored. AWS isn't going to get discontinued tomorrow. Sure, it might have an outage, but how many companies around are actually redeploying their entire infrastructure to Azure just to cover an AWS outage? I'm gonna say hardly any, and the ones that are doing it are generally household names. Very, very big companies might have elaborate disaster recovery plans that involve deploying all of their data and infrastructure to another cloud provider entirely. But personally, I've never seen that being done much successfully in the wild. And honestly, for 99.9% .9 of use cases, it's just not gonna be applicable. So for that reason, I'm actually gonna say that vendor lock-in with AWS is unfortunately acceptable. And therefore, all those other benefits of having a much more flexible code-first approach to building infrastructure makes it a win for the AWS CDK. So two, one to them. Let's move on. Now, the next category is to compare these two on the learning curve and the ease of use. Now, while the CDK and Terraform do both achieve the same end goal, they offer two very different conceptual models of how you think of your infrastructure. The CDK follows an object-oriented approach where you create classes called constructs, and then you create instances of those classes to define multiple instances of the same service. So you might have a construct for S3 bucket or something like that. Um, and then you create an instance of that S3 bucket, which is creating a new S3 bucket. Terraform, on the other hand, takes an entirely declarative template-based approach. So it's a transform that you just define your S3 bucket in a Terraform template, and you can use that template multiple times in parent templates if you want to. So which of these is easier? Well, in all honesty, I'm gonna say Terraform. OOP is complicated, and it's kind of why it's fallen out of fashion in the programming world recently. Keeping track of how many instances of all the objects that you've created and how they're flying around everywhere, that can be a bit of a mental challenge sometimes, and nothing beats the pure simplicity of just having declarative templates for everything. So I'm gonna hand this one to Terraform. There's generally less code, and there's much less to think about. Once you've defined your templates, you're basically done. There's no compilation step that you have to do, um, and there's certainly no debugging or one-time errors with Terraform, because there isn't really a time. So I'm going to say that, that makes it easier to use. So that makes it two all. And we're down to the last category, what I'm going to call extensibility. So when you're picking between the AWS CDK and Terraform, extensibility is one of those areas where the tools really show their personality. So let's break it down, right? The AWS CDK is like having a massive toolbox and you get to decide exactly how to use it. Because it uses general purpose programming languages, then you can write your own reusable constructs. You can basically do pretty much whatever you want to do as a software developer. So if you need to add a bunch of logic, that's absolutely fine. If you want to package that logic into a library and share that across your projects and use them in other CDK projects, again, just like with any other piece of programming. So if you've got a common pattern, like let's say you had a VPC with specific security group rules, then you can wrap that into a construct and suddenly that's a reusable piece of code in your project. So CDK is fantastic for teams that want to go beyond just spinning up resources and they really want to focus on reusability and customization. Terraform, on the other hand, takes a slightly different approach. Terraform is more about simplicity of the templates themselves. So you've got modules and things, and they are great for creating, you know, you can still do reusable pieces of infrastructure, but Terraform sticks to that declarative nature, and there's no built-in way of adding complex programming logic um, and everything like in there. Everything in Terraform is basically just about describing the desired state, and that's it. So that makes it really predictable, but it also means that you hit a wall if you're trying to do something super dynamic or super intricate. Now there are tools like Terragrunt, which extends Terraform to handle some of the logic outside of the HCL files, but it's not really the same seamless experience that you get when you're coding directly in a language like TypeScript with the AWS CDK. So here's the trade-off basically. The CDK gives you freedom and flexibility. You can build and extend and reuse almost anything you want to, but with great power comes great responsibility. You're managing actual code and that requires some discipline to keep things maintainable. It requires coding standards basically. Terraform it keeps it clean and straightforward. It's easier to keep your infrastructure consistent and it's much more predictable, but it might feel quite limiting if you're trying to create something really customized. 
So if you're in a team full of developers who love writing code, then the CDK might feel like the perfect fit. But if your focus is on keeping the infrastructure simple and portable and accessible to everyone, then maybe you'll go for Terraform. At the end of the day, it's about what kind of flexibility your team really needs. Are you looking for a completely blank canvas or are you looking for a really well-defined and opinionated framework? Both those tools are powerful, but they lean into very different philosophies when it comes to extensibility. And since this is a tiebreaker category, I'm gonna have to make a bold call here and say that due to the trajectory I see these two frameworks taking in the future, and with everything I said before about Terraform's licensing model changing, I actually think that the CDK is where we'll see more extensibility in the future. So I'm gonna call this close, but ultimately the deciding category goes to the CDK. So there you have it. The AWS CDK versus Terraform. They're both very powerful tools, but they do have very different approaches to managing your infrastructure. And here's the question I want to think about, right? What kind of team are you in and what kinds of problems are you trying to solve with your infrastructure? Are you really deep into the AWS ecosystem and you want to use code? Then the CDK might be your new best friend there. But if you're looking for something that's multi-cloud or something that's focused on simplicity, maybe so that your templates can be read by non-software developers, then Terraform is probably your best choice there as well, right? So what do you think? Let me know in the comment section below. Are you a CDK team person or are you absolutely stuck into Terraform or OpenTF as it often is now? Remember, the best tool is the one that helps you and your team ship the product fastest. So choose these wisely. They both have benefits. They both have trade-offs. Pick one. Check out my other videos. My name's James, and this is Trains Code on YouTube.